Grand Teton National Park is easily one of the most beautiful places in the United States. The way that Teton Range dominates the landscape is something you have to see with your own eyes. This park is often dwarfed by its neighbor Yellowstone, but it is well worthy of your time and adventure. Here's how I spent two days exploring Grand Teton National Park and stay to the end where I show you my favorite spot in the park for photography. Let's jump into it. I spent the previous day exploring Jackson, Wyoming with my cousins, so check out that video in the description if you're interested. But for the next two days, I set out to explore as much as I could of Grand Teton National Park. From the minute you leave Jackson and start driving towards the park, you'll be impressed with how amazing the mountain range is out in front of you. It's just iconic and you can see it from all over the park. I got super lucky and was able to find a parking spot right near the entrance and now we're going to take the boat across Jenny Lake and do some hiking. The Jenny Lake area is probably the most popular spot in the national park and parking can fill up fast, especially in the summer. I recommend getting there early and planning on spending about a half day there. Before setting out on the boat to cross over the lake and do the hiking trails, there's a visitor center you can see and there's a store that has ice cream, snacks, and other drinks. Be sure to check the schedule so you don't get caught on the other side and have to do the two mile hike back, but when I went it was 7am to 7pm. When I went it was $20 for a round trip boat ride and boats left every 10-15 to 15 minutes so it never took very long to wait for one. If you don't want to pay for the boat and just want to walk around the lake, it is two miles additional each way, so four miles total round trip. You can just do the boat one direction if you want to as well. After loading up in the boat, we set out and it takes about 10 minutes to cross the lake. I have to say this is well worth the price as the views you get from the water are stunning of the Teton Range and the park all around you. Plus there's a guide who gives you information on the area and the hiking trails as you make your way over. Once you dock, you can get out and explore for as long as you like, and then when you're ready to come back, you just have to wait on the dock for the next available boat. Made it across, headed to Hidden Falls and Inspiration Point. If you want to go to both of these, it's about two miles round trip with 400 feet of elevation gain, and all that elevation gain is basically on the portion that heads up to Inspiration Point. This is a beautiful trail, steady uphill, but you're right along the water and you got some good mountain views. There are about 40 people on my boat, but the trail didn't seem too busy as everybody kind of just spaces out and hikes at their own pace. This was right in the middle of summer though, which is the busiest time to be in the park. Made it to Hidden Falls. Hidden Falls is right around 100 feet and the viewing area is actually pretty far away from the falls, so it's hard to tell how big it is. There is some seating here though, and it's a nice spot to relax and have a snack before continuing on. Hidden Falls is about a half mile and 150 feet of elevation. Up to Inspiration Point is another half mile and about 250 feet of elevation. Some people opt to just go to Hidden Falls and back as the hike up to Inspiration Point is definitely steep and it has some big drop offs in one section. It is pretty much in the sun the entire way as well. When you get here, you may think that you're Inspiration Point, but you're not. It's actually way up there. You can see the people on the trail. This viewpoint is also a great place to stop if you don't feel like continuing on, as you can look in the canyon behind you and out across Jenny Lake in front of you. About two more sets of switchbacks and then we've made it to Inspiration Point. Note that there's not a ton of shade on this trail and it is steep, so be ready. This is the part of the trail where I noticed a lot of people getting nervous who didn't like to have big drops on one side of them. I would say the trail is relatively wide and it's not bad at all, but just something to note before you go. We made it to Inspiration Point and look at these views. Wow. The views up here are massive and dramatic and it's interesting that you can look out across the park and not see big mountains like you have behind you. Inspiration Point is stunning and a worthwhile destination. I'm gonna head up a little bit longer, go into Cascade Canyon a little bit before looping back to the boat. At this junction, we're leaving Inspiration Point Trail and we're officially on the Cascade Canyon Trail. I wasn't even planning on doing any of Cascade Canyon, but when I got up there, I felt pretty good and decided to continue on. 
That ended up being one of the best decisions I made during my entire time in Grand Teton National Park. You've already done a lot of the elevation game by getting an inspiration point, and so it's just a gradual uphill into Cascade Canyon. Plus, once you make it into Cascade Canyon, the views are unlike anything you have ever seen before. We're about a mile from Inspiration Point and the views just opened up into Cascade Canyon. Hiking all the way through Cascade Canyon is about three miles each way, so six miles round trip. You guys, these views are just blowing my mind right now. This is so incredibly cool. Check it out, there's a moose right here along the riverbank. I've never been hiking and seen a moose before. It's not doing anything, which is good. I don't want to get any closer, but man, that's pretty cool to see. When I think back on national park experiences, being able to see a moose in Cascade Canyon with waterfalls and massive ragged peaks on both sides of me is something that I'll never forget and one of the best national park experiences I've had. All right, we went about a mile and a quarter to get to this spot, which was well worth it. You absolutely should do it. The views of the canyon, the mountains, incredible. I spent too much time with the moose though, so I'm turning around here. It actually gets wooded right there as well before coming back out again. The ranger told me about 20 minutes from here is another great view, so if you have more time to hike, then do it. If not, head back like me. On the way back, I just retraced my steps past Inspiration Point and down towards where you split off to go to the waterfall. The views were even better on the way down as you got to soak them in more instead of trying to catch your breath. All right, so I did 3.75 miles and 680 feet of elevation gain to get where I got. Now we're loading up on the boat to go back. There was a sign showing how long the line can be and that it could take 45 minutes from a specific spot to get on. So I'm guessing it must get really busy during the weekends during certain times of the year, but for me, I only had to wait about five minutes to get on a boat. It was really cool to be able to look back on Cascade Canyon after having hiked in it myself. Back from that incredible hike and now we're gonna go tour around the park in our car, do a bunch of overlooks because tomorrow we're gonna do another crazy hike. Right as I was pulling out of the parking lot, there was a deer that was just hanging out, munching on flowers with the Tetons behind it. Grand Teton is one of those national parks where you have to have a car and to drive around to really experience it. The park is pretty big and there are a lot of hiking trails, but many of them are long and relatively inaccessible for the average hiker. Because of that, one of the best ways to see the park is just to drive the scenic route and pull out at the many different viewpoints. All right, once we turn right here, this is one of my favorite views in the park. This view as you're approaching the Jenny Lake Scenic Drive is pretty impossible to beat. As you turn onto the scenic drive, it becomes a one-way road with a lane for cars and a lane for bikers, runners, and walkers. It's a really nice route to drive and there's one major viewpoint, so hopefully you're able to find a parking spot when you drive by it. That's the canyon that we were just in hiking around right there. If you're able to grab a spot, take your time, walk on the trails, head down to the beach, just take it all in. This is a really tough overlook to park at as the parking lot's small and it's a one-way road so you have to go all the way back around if you miss the parking area. But it's definitely worth getting out for, it's beautiful. As you leave here, you'll continue driving along the lake but the views are not great as you can only see it barely through the trees. I think one of the best things about Grand Teton National Park is just how easily you can access these insane views of the mountains. There's so many turnouts that look just like this making it super easy. Here's another viewpoint on the drive north. This one's cool because you can really see the outlines of the entire range. From here, we just kept driving north to see more of the park. Those people are very close to that animal. I hope if you're watching this, I don't need to tell you to not get that close. So we're at that weird in between where I didn't really eat lunch and it's almost dinner time. So I'm gonna have something to eat, let the sun go down a little bit more. So all of those viewpoints that we're gonna see, maybe it'll be closer to sunset. My cousin Clark, who's a chef, told me I should have lunch at the Trapper Grill and that I should order a half order of nachos. He's never steered me wrong, so that's what I decided to do. The half portion. 
can't even imagine the full. That is pretty crazy. So yeah, I didn't finish my meal here, but I have to say it was really good and look at the view. Two things. First, ask for a table outside if you can. It was beautiful overlooking the lake. Second, those nachos said they fed two people. Those could easily feed four. I can't even imagine how much a full order could feed. Maybe like two or three families. And on to do some more in Grand Tetons. As we headed north, we were driving along the massive Jackson Lake and we stopped to see the Jackson Lake Dam. If you're interested, there are stairs that'll take you down closer to the dam and let you see where the Snake River emerges from Jackson Lake. Plus, you can walk across from the parking area and get some views of Jackson Lake from this spot as well. As you cross the river, Teton Park Road ends at US Highway 191. You can head north to go towards Yellowstone or you can head south to continue your drive through the park. Heading south, there's a lot more viewpoints to see in the park, with the first being at Oxbow Bend. Continuing from here, there'll be another park entrance as if you had come down from Yellowstone, and then another junction before you continue south. Right around the Elk Ranch Flats turnout, I saw a huge herd of bison. I feel like I'm in the Lion King with all these birds landing on top of the buffalo. This is a popular wildlife area in the park and you'll often see bison and sometimes even elk here. There was a bison jam here as a lot of the bison were crossing the road and stopping the cars, but I wasn't upset about it. I spent about 45 minutes just hanging out. So the first herd ran by and it looks like this second herd is gonna run by again too. There they go, they just ran across the road and then sprinted out into the pasture. It was such a cool view to see these animals with the mountains behind them. Alright, saying goodbye, heading on to the next spot, but that was, that was really cool. As you're heading back on this road, you're a lot further away from the mountains than we were on the way up, but there's still a lot of great viewpoints. So these next few viewpoints aren't actually very good at sunset time. They're more sunrise and early morning type viewpoints. But I wanted to show them to you in case I don't get here again. And you can go see these when you come visit. This is the first one which was made famous by the Ansel Adams photograph. Here's the photograph that made this spot famous right here. You can see that the uh, trees have grown up a lot since then. As someone that started their career as a landscape photographer, I always enjoy being able to see the places that Ansel Adams photographed. Even though I've been to this viewpoint many times, there's always a sense of magic here. To end our first day in the park, we made our way over to my favorite viewpoint, Schwabacher Landing. You have to drive down to this one on a dirt road, but I've never really had any problems doing it in a lower car. All right, this is our last stop of the day and 100% my favorite viewpoint, but unfortunately, it's another sunrise viewpoint. If you're a person who gets up for sunrise, then you have to do this when you're here. It's one of the best views I've ever seen at sunrise. The water here is a small offshoot of the Snake River, and when the wind's not flowing, it creates a perfect reflection of the Teton Range. Can you guys believe how beautiful that is? That reflection and the stream and the Tetons. That's some next level stuff right there. There's a short trail that you can walk out to that goes to a beaver dam, but my favorite spot is just right at the beginning, taking in the view of the water with the mountains. And with that, our first day in Grand Tetons National Park is done. We'll see you tomorrow for a lot more exploring. I stayed the night in the town of Jackson, and so I set my alarm for 5 a.m., got coffee at the only place that was open, Cowboy Coffee, and then made it into the park before sunrise. I wish I could have gone to my favorite lookout to take sunrise pictures, but I had heard about how notoriously difficult this trail is to park at, and so I wanted to make sure I had the best chances of getting the spot. It's 6.50 right now, and the upper parking lot is entirely full already. This is the Lupine Meadows parking area, and if you don't get into the upper lot or close to it, you could easily add a mile or two onto your hike just to get to the trailhead. 
Starting the trail to Surprise and Amphitheater Lakes, this is a 10 mile round trip trail to two beautiful lakes and it's going to take probably most of the morning to complete. Also note that parking lot was full at 6.50 on a Sunday and you had to park down the road and walk up so you got to get here early if you want to do this hike. We're a quarter mile in and that's the entirety of the flat portion on this hike. From now on it is uphill all the way to the lakes. This trail has over 3,000 feet of elevation gain, so it is basically uphill the entire way. The uphill is on switchback, so it is more gradual, but it's still a very difficult hike. It's a bear. Can you see him? He's walking all the way over there. Outside of Katmai National Park in Alaska, I have never been on a trail with a bear before, so this was something new for me. There's a bear right in front of you guys. He's about to walk across the trail, I think. Unfortunately, the only shot I got of the bear crossing over the trail was in vertical mode, but uh, here's the shot if you wanna see it. All right, well, that was pretty crazy. There was a bear on the trail. I think it was a black bear. Not sure, it was pretty small. Still kind of terrifying and kind of exciting at the same time. Remember to have your bear spray on this trail. Of course, 99 times out of 100, you won't need to use it, but it's just good to have. Right around the two mile mark, that's when the switchbacks start. And it switchbacks all the way to the lake from here. As you continue on, the trail is well maintained and easy to follow. It's highly trafficked because it's also used to access the popular Delta Lake, but that's not an official national park trail with no signs, and I saw multiple people lost trying to get there. I wouldn't recommend you do it until the national park creates a trail for it, as I try to stay only on the recommended trails myself. I heard that Delta is amazing though, so I hope they turn it into an official trail one of these days. We're right about two and a half miles in, right at the bend in the switchback. It's beautiful. While it seems like I'm going really fast here, it actually took me about six hours to complete, but I'm just trying to give you the highlights. The views keep getting better and better, but they also don't really change much as you're basically just going up the side of the mountain. Two things to know about this trail. First, it's a lot of direct suns. I wouldn't do it in the heat of the day. It's gonna be pretty brutal. And two, it's higher elevation, so I'm at like 8,500 feet right now. If you come from sea level and try to immediately do it, it's probably gonna be pretty tough on your lungs, so take that into consideration. Only a few more switchbacks before we make it to the first lake. Once you make it to the top of the switchbacks, the trail levels out and you start walking towards the lakes. Here we go, the turnoff for Surprise Lake, elevation 9540. And just like that, we have made it to Surprise Lake. Surprise Lake was a stunning high altitude lake with great reflections of the surrounding mountains. So it took me just under two and a half hours to get up here and I'm the only person here right now. We're gonna head up to the second lake though and that's where we're gonna stop and have some lunch. Amphitheater Lake is two tenths of a mile. Surprise Lake was beautiful, but multiple people had told me that Amphitheater blew it out of the water, so I wanted to get there as quickly as I could. Amphitheater Lake, elevation 9,698. I have to say that upon seeing it, they were completely right. Amphitheater Lake sits in a large bowl with the Grand Teton out in front of you. So that mountain right there, the little tip top, that is the Grand Teton. And this one right here is called Disappointment Peak because they climbed all the way up there, thought they could get to the Grand from there, and then when they got up there, they realized that they couldn't. Not a bad spot for a snack break, right? Here, there were probably five other people who were enjoying the view with me. Amphitheater Lake is easily a place I could have spent the entire day at. There was even a couple who decided to jump in the lake and they let me know it was freezing cold. There was even a cute little pika that was running back and forth and we got to watch while we were having lunch. This view was definitely worth the steep hike up. All right, I spent about an hour hanging out here. Just an incredible lake, beautiful views. I wish I could spend the entire day 
but we're heading back down and I'm putting this away. Once I made it all the way back down, it's pretty impressive to see how much you climb to get to Amphitheater Lake. Plus, as you can no doubt tell, getting there early for parking was definitely the way to do it. After finishing the hike, I headed to get lunch before doing a few more stops to end the video. For lunch, I headed to Dornan's, which is a fan favorite for pizza, and it's right next to the park entrance. I mean, have you ever seen a better view while you're eating pizza? We're back at the same viewpoint we went to last night, but I didn't want your impression of this viewpoint to be anything less than the stellar view that it is, so I wanted you to see it again. I mean, come on, right? Look at that. That is next level beautiful. Look at that reflection, and look at how much the Tetons are standing out right now. Wow. You guys believe me now about how incredible this viewpoint is, right? After hanging out at the viewpoint for a little bit longer, I made my way to my last stop in the park. Last up was the Mormon Row Historic District. This area features the remains of a community that was settled in the late 1800s. At one point, there were 27 homesteads in this area and there was a church and a school. It's now most well known for the historic barns which make amazing photos with the Teton range behind them. When I was there, there were volunteers dressed in historic clothes giving you insights into the life of the settlers, which was a cool touch. And with that, our time in Grand Tetons National Park is done. Hopefully you enjoyed exploring this beautiful park with me. Get out here and see it for yourself and let me know if I left off your favorite spot in the comments. We'll see you on the next one.